This is Wild Chronicles. Long underwear, wool socks, fleece gloves. That's another way of saying bathing suit in Antarctica. It's what marine biologist David Cothran and I are wearing under our dry suits as we gear up to explore the waters off the Antarctic Peninsula. It doesn't exactly keep you warm, but it does keep you from going hypothermic in the first five minutes. We use twin regulators when diving in polar waters because there's always a chance of the regulator freezing freshwater moisture from your exhalation. For a little while. Fully loaded, we're carrying about 150 pounds. Okay, now we're gonna... All set? What do we think the water is? 34, 32? Uh, no, here I think it's more like 30. 30? 30 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Water's fine, come in. <laughs> Some 90% of the world's ice is in Antarctica, containing about 70% of the planet's fresh water. On this dive, we want to get a perspective on the density and enormity of the submerged portion of an iceberg. As little as 10% may be visible above the surface. The ice feels as hard as concrete, but the sculpted surface of ridges and holes is proof the bergs are not indestructible. As a diver, I've observed changes of dive sites that I attribute to warming waters, to global climate change here in the in, in Antarctic, um, even over a period as short as five years. A recent report from researchers at the University of Colorado determined the total mass of the Antarctic ice sheet is in significant decline. Up to 36 cubic miles are lost every year. If the trend continues, it could lead to a disastrous rise in global sea levels, a warming of Antarctic waters, and a loss of some species that thrive in this cold ocean. One reason I've joined David to dive off a National Geographic endeavor is to see just what does live down here. It's an opportunity few have, or probably won't. It's a chance for exploration. You really get to see things you don't expect. I have the opportunity to dive many sites that have never been dived before. The Antarctic marine life is also just barely becoming known now. I see things I've never seen before, even after over 100 dives. Although many of these creatures are also found in warmer waters, some have subtle but essential differences, like this Antarctic cot. It survives thanks to the chemical equivalent of long underwear. The fish use an amazing adaptation to prevent their blood from freezing. They make glycoproteins, which are chemically very much like the antifreeze we put in our car's radiators in the winter. And that helps to prevent ice molecules from forming in their blood. Sea stars and sponges, like these cone sponges on the wall at Deception Island, provide an unexpected and colorful contrast the mostly black and white world at the surface. It's thought that many sponges in the Antarctic can be very, very old. Even little starfish this big can be 100 years old. And the sponge we saw was probably about six feet tall. To grow that big, it would most likely take a 1,000 years or more. No one knows for sure because the studies aren't nearly as old as the animals. But it's our belief that animals like that are truly ancient. Most isopods are of the half-inch variety, but the giant Antarctic isopod can grow up to eight inches. It has swimming legs that open from underneath, allowing it to move without falling. Nimmertians are proboscis worms, which look a lot like a wet noodle. They're also larger in Antarctica, reaching six feet in length. Sea spiders are another creature that grow bigger here. They're just about all leg. Their bodies are so small that they are the only animals that have significant parts of their internal organs in their legs. 
Then we got lucky and started seeing some rare sights. David has seen the limpets before, but this is only the second time he's watched them spawning. Crinoids, or feather stars, are mostly found in deeper water, below scuba depth. But on this trip, we encountered more than 50 of them. It's unusual to see even one while diving. In fact, only one other dive have I ever seen them. Their arms look just like feathers, and the projections along those arms are designed for gathering food that falls on them from the water above. That's true for many animals that live on the bottom in the Antarctic. They depend on the rain of what's called marine snow, which is any kind of detritus, decaying kelp and penguin feces and anything like that that's introduced to the water, tends to collect together in little flakes and then slowly fall toward the bottom. Given the limited exploration that's been done here, there was a chance we might find something completely new. And later, comparing what we saw with the field guides, maybe we did. I saw a worm that I have never seen before in 112 dives down here. And checking later, I found that the one the individual I saw was at least twice as long as the largest size previously recorded in the Antarctic. So it may be a different species. It's that possibility that will keep me and others coming back. It will be a while before we can confirm our discovery, but there are beautiful and strange creatures under this ice that no one has ever seen before.